Uh, what is the news? Uh, we're probably not gonna have time to recap all of Collision and, and SmackDown, but what what were the big things that came out of Collision? Um, let's see. Um, Jericho beat Teton. Teton looked good. Um, they did a street fight with House of Black against Jeff Jarrett, Mark Briscoe, and Jay Lethal, where Mark got put through a flaming table and lost. So I think they might be setting up maybe a ring of fire match, a ring surrounded by fire match type of a thing or something with them. Um, it was, you know, there's it was one of those matches that you get on AEW all the time where they didn't do thumbtacks, but they did a whole bunch of tables and now fire. And I mean, it was well, you know, Malachi Black looked really good and and Jay Briscoe. I mean, Mark Briscoe's got a lot of um, you know, a lot of uh people really, really like him. And it was a good match. But, you know, again, I'm you know, they did do too much, is basically what I would say. I mean, it's so it didn't really move me or anything. It was kind of like, oh, I've seen it, but but they work hard. I mean, they worked really hard and it was it was very well wrestled. They um Young Bucks and Okada did a squash where the Young Bucks never even tagged in. Okada just came in, did three or four moves. Great drop kick, Rainmaker, and that was it. And then um, Penta came in first. And then, um, um, what was it? Uh, um, well, Eddie Kingston came in first. Then they were beat, they beat it. Penta, Eddie Kingston came in first. They beat him down. Penta made the save. They beat him down. And the final save was Pac. And Pac cleared the ring of the Young Bucks and ended up with Pack and Okada, and they did a really cool sequence, and the Young Bucks pulled Okada out of the ring. So we got a six-man, Young Bucks and Okada against Eddie Kingston, Penta, and Pack for Wednesday, which is a loaded-up show, and, you know, building up to Okada and uh, Eddie Kingston, I think, on the pay-per-view. Uh, uh, elephant in the room here, but I said, was was Pat coming back from an injury? Because he looked so much smaller compared to the yeah. last time I saw yeah. him. He's ripped, but yeah, he's he's lighter for sure. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. He's been out for like seven months or something like that. He's been out for a long, long time. I I also saw Danielson and Osprey had an interview segment. I didn't get to actually hear it. I had to read the subtitles because I was I was watching it between the fights uh, uh on ufc but that you you had reported already in the observer that that match was done anyway so they, 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 it's basically um danielson does his match with shane taylor which is a really good match and um you know one and then osprey comes out in the crowd very into osprey and he's just you know complimenting danielson and uh you know basically you know just putting him over and then uh you know, um, he just goes, I think you probably have something you want to say to me, you know, because Danielson came out and he goes, yeah, you know, um, basically challenged him to a match on April 21st and said, they said like, you know, you're the best in the world and to prove you're the best in the world, you know, you got to face me. And, you know, they were completely cordial. It was not a baby face heel thing. They may, they may have Danielson try to be a, a baby. I mean, a heel, you know, in the next week or two, you know, I mean, as they do all the time. But this was a total respect, total sportsmanship thing. And, um, you know, it's a match that to the people who want to see it, um, to that audience, I mean, it's one of the biggest matches you could ever do. Um, I think it's, you know, Danielson's coming off a bunch of losses. But you know what? Guess what? To the people who are into this type of thing, they know Danielson can lose 100 matches in a row. They know how good he is. Well, which actually takes me to the Shane Taylor match because I thought it was really good. And I thought I was like, man, Taylor better get something out of this because he looked awesome in this match. Taylor, Taylor's been looking really good in his matches. Yeah. And at the same time, I thought for building, you know, uh, to your top match or second to the top match or whatever for the pay-per-view, I almost felt like Danielson gave way too much in this match but like you said well, it's different. It you know what? everyone everyone's got the theories i mean in the old days um the top guys would go on tv against jobbers and sell 80 percent of the time and then beat them and that's that's what top guys did um especially heels so then you got you know i mean in in you know we got we've got kind of educated to a different way but it's not, it's, you know, I grew up, I grew up on the top guys selling like crazy for jobbers going into the Cal Palace main event. That's, that was our style. 
So it doesn't bother me. And, and Ric Flair made a career of that, you know, so, and Harley Race did not as much as Ric Flair, but still to a degree, always, you know, giving stuff to the underneath guys. And, and he was the world champion. So I don't, that doesn't really bother me at all. You know, when people go, Oh my God, you know, like Brian Danielson gave blah, blah, blah. And it's like, he's still Brian Danielson. You know, it's like, it's like, you know, I mean, and, and he's one who we can even lose a lot. Now I do think he's lost some luster by losing so many. And I, that's why I thought he should have beaten Eddie Kingston, but I get where they're going. If the, if the mentality is, is we're getting a triple crown on Okada, um, then Eddie Kingston should have beat Brian Danielson. And again, Brian Danielson, Will Ospreay to the people who want to see that match. The fact Brian Danielson's lost a bunch of matches doesn't hurt it at all. It's still, you're going to see the spectacle of Will Ospreay and Brian Danielson. So in that case, it doesn't, you know, I mean, it's, you know, to the, to the, whatever the masses are or whatever, but there, I don't think that those people are so much buying AEW pay-per-views anyway. I think the AEW pay-per-view audience is much, much more into the fact. And I think the consistency of their numbers, even though it's different people, it's, it's, very much the idea of we're going to get a fucking great show. And that's why I think that their pay-per-view numbers have held up. Whereas so you know, the TV numbers, you know, certainly on Friday. Yeah, Saturday. We, we, we can talk about that rating in a second. Um, do you, Okada and that belt is, is an interesting one for me because the new Japan strong title is kind of intertwined with that whole thing. Right. And when, and when ring of when, honor, and ring of honor yeah. And so and so when I think of it that way, I'm like, like, why would Okada care? But if you really want to get that belt over uh, and, you know, and if Okada wins it, you can sort of treat it as like the secondary world title just because of sure. his status. But, but the thing the thing on this is, is like, I mean, I, I cannot see bring Okada in and having Eddie Kingston beat him. Now. Yes. Yes. I mean, I don't even. It doesn't even make sense to me. So, especially after that. tonight. <laughs> yeah. The, the 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 young bucks were laughing on the apron. I was cracking up. Yeah, but I mean, it's like it's like um, yeah. It does. It, you know, again, like before, I thought like yeah, they should put Brian Danielson over and elevate that belt. But in a sense, they don't have to. If they were going to go with Okada, you know, Okada's got more time to go. In AEW, so if you're going to make someone and also make the belt, I mean, you could put that thing on Okada and have him defend it for a year. Yeah, you know, that's yeah. that's that would make sense to me. And 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 it becomes as valuable as a world title, I think. Right. If Okada has it, you know, especially because he's going to be defending it against good people because they're loaded with good people, and he's going to have great matches, you know, with these good people. So it's almost like you've got you know two world title matches to go along with everything else that you got on these 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 pay-per-view shows but does it basically it takes the title away from roh though right well he, he should defend it on roh shows but that's just, you know there's no reason not to it's because i i mean when's the last time kingston was on i guess he'll be on the the april show i'm pretty sure he's on the next one yeah yeah, yeah. Um, all right, what else? Uh, what else did I write down? So the tag tournament starts next week on right. collision. Well, hopefully, hopefully we'll have brackets on Wednesday. Yeah, that would be nice because then we can do March Madness like the NCAA does March Madness. By the way, this is not related to wrestling, but uh, you know, I, I've been filling out NCAA brackets probably since I was like 10 years old. Like just because college basketball was always so huge, but for the first time ever in my life, I'm following the women's tournament more than I'm following the men's tournament. I know more women really in uh, in, in NCAA basketball right now than I know of the guys because I follow. I used to follow men's college basketball, but then it just became sort of like oh because of the NBA. And now the, the the players don't even really become stars in the NBA because they kind of skip college now. And with the Warriors getting a, a WNBA team next year, um, I'm way more interested in, in, in the women's side. But uh, Caitlin Clark, for those of you who, oh, I know who are, wa are watching for ratings, uh, she is she, she drew an insane number. Uh, I think it was last weekend. She did like over four million or something for for a game. So. That's pretty impressive this, in this day and age, that's for sure. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.